Good morning. I'm Councilmember Adrian Adams, and welcome to this meeting of the Subcommittee on Landmarks, Public Sightings, and Dispositions. Joining us this morning are my subcommittee members, Council Members Traeger, Koo, Barron, Miller. We also have um, my colleagues, uh, Council Member Ruben Diaz Sr., Council Member Margaret Chin, Council Member Carlina Rivera, Council Member Donovan Richards, Council Member Francisco Moya, Chair Salamanca, and Council Member Antonio Reynoso. Today we're voting on one item, LU 563, an application submitted by the Department of Housing Preservation and Department Development for the Hunters Point South Parcels FNG Article 11 tax exemption. This tax exemption would facilitate the, de the development of 847 units of affordable housing as part of a previously approved urban development area project on property located in Queens at block six, lots 20 and 30. The development is located in Council Member Van Bramer's district and the Council Member supports the project. I now call for a vote to approve LU 563. Council, please call the roll. Adams. I vote aye. Barron. I vote no. Koo. Aye. Miller. May uh, I please explain my vote? Council Member Miller. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. While I uh, I have real concerns. I have real concerns here about the process. Uh, last week we were uh, asked to hear this very complex uh, project and at the same time consider voting on it. And subsequently, uh, it is a very complex project which I think uh, has potential impact that impacts the integrity of affordable housing throughout the city as we move forward. Um, and uh, I still have a lot of questions about it and, and, and something of this magnitude, uh, we have not had an opportunity to really understand it, study it, and look at its impact and uh, potential unintended consequences to affordable housing as we move forward. Um, but that being said, I have been in talks with obviously land use and, and others and uh, we're going to continue to work through this at this moment, I am not uh, sufficiently satisfied, and so I'll be abstaining. Traeger. By a vote of three in the affirmative, one in the negative, with one abstention, the item is recommended for referral to the full land use committee. I'd like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, council, and land use staff for attending today's hearing. The meeting is hereby adjourned. Thank you.
This is the Committee on Land Use, November 12, 2019, in the committee room, and this is Owen Katowski. Testing one, two, three, four, test one, two, you good now? All right. Test.
All right, good, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Committee on Land Use. I am Councilmember Rafael Salamanca, Chair of this committee. I would like to welcome my esteemed colleagues who are members of the committee and are present today. We have Council Members Barron, Deutsch, Kuhl, Levin, Miller, Reynoso, Richards, Traeger, Grudenchik, Chair Adams, Diaz, Chair Moya, Rivera. And that's it. All right. I would like to thank Chair Moya and Chair Adams for their work on our land use subcommittees. Today, from our land use subcommittees, we will vote to approve three projects. We will vote to approve with modifications LUs 548 and LUs 549, the Eastside Coastal Resiliency Project. LUs 548 is an application submitted by the Department of Transportation, the Department of Environmental Protection, and the Department of Citywide Administrative Services for the acquisition of various properties along the FDR Drive in the districts of Councilmember Rivera, Chin, and Powers for a flood protection system. LUs 549 is a related application submitted by the New York City Department of Small Business Services for a zoning tax amendment to modify to modify special regulations for zoning lots that include parks located in a marginal street in an M1-1 district in Manhattan Community Board, Community District 6. The Eastside Coastal Resiliency Project is the first of its kind in New York. This comprehensive flood protection system along the East River in Manhattan seeks to provide critical flood protection to more than 110,000 vulnerable New Yorkers. Since our October 3rd hearing, the affected council members have been fighting hard to secure commitments to ensure that the impacts to the community during construction are lessened as much as possible. And with that, we will first hear remarks from council member Rivera, followed by council member Chin. Thank you so much, Chair Salamanca, for giving me the opportunity to briefly speak on LUs 548 and 549, which are related to the Eastside Coastal Resiliency Project, or ESCR. I'm happy to say that after more than a year of negotiations, there is an agreement on ESCR between myself, Council Member Powers, and Chin, and the city. This agreement was based primarily on the ideas and feedback that members of our communities offered to make implementation of this plan better than what was originally presented. I'm proud that our agreement includes nearly every commitment we requested from phased, safe, and timely ESCR construction to parks and NYCHA improvements to re-examining interim flood protections and studying bikeways and the future of the FDR. The breadth of these community investments can be seen in the support we have received today from many groups that had expressed skepticism with this plan over the last year. We have received support from NYCHA leaders and Little League coaches, park tenants and policy experts, and even cultural stewards. What is clear is that this community did not just want a flood protection plan. We needed a plan that would help address environmental injustice even as we transform our coastline to defend our homes and East River Park itself from climate catastrophes. And the commitments to complete this vision are numerous, starting with the incredible number of trees this project will provide to the east side, a net gain of 2,100 native, diverse, and resilient species on our streets and in our park. We can also count on improvements to over 17 parks and six NYCHA campuses, partnerships with community gardens, extended hours at school recreation sites, and new barbecue areas. We are reaffirming collaborations with Solar One and Lower East Side Ecology Center. We're also expanding pedestrian-focused infrastructure with commitments for new protected bike lanes in Alphabet City and the expansion of closed street programming. And we're planning for the future with both a new disaster preparedness campaign for our frontline residents and a commitment to study the future of the FDR in a world that must include reduced vehicle use and emissions. But as this project spanning three council districts moves forward, it's clear that the community's trust with the city surrounding this project must continue to be repaired. I certainly understand the mistrust after decades of neglect certain neighborhoods have experienced at the hands of all levels of government. These trust issues are exactly why Borough President Brewer and I hired the environmental experts at Del Taris to conduct a report after the city apologized for their mistakes. That report motivated the city to release additional documentation supporting the project's design and to commit to reanalyzing our neighborhoods for implementation of interim flood protection measures. I was also happy to see the Deltaris report conclude that this plan is also the most adaptable for future infrastructural reconstruction surrounding the FDR drive. 
Going forward, we have negotiated to make sure the community has a seat at the table during construction with funding committed by the city for an ESCR community advisory group. I look forward to the ESCR community advisory group following in the footsteps of predecessors like the Gowanus Canal community advisory group and helping to amplify community voices, hold the city accountable, and lay the groundwork for long-term stewardship. The city is also ensuring that throughout construction, there is reporting of air monitoring, soil testing, noise reduction measures, and the inclusion of contractual incentives to help ensure early or on-time completion. The city is also ensuring that throughout construction, there is reporting constantly to the community advisory group, who we are excited to be a diverse group of stakeholders. Today's vote marks an important moment in our city's fight against climate change. Clearly, we're not adapting to this world fast enough. But even in the areas where we, are doing, where we are doing so, like Manhattan's east side, it won't be easy. I lived through a climate nightmare, like many of you, that was exacerbated by decades of people doing nothing. It's been seven years since Sandy, and as council members representing nearly 200,000 New Yorkers, I know each and every one of you would do anything to protect your own communities. As climate change accelerates, I will be there to fight for coastal protections for all of New York City. But with federal funding for this project set to expire soon, funds that this community competed for and earned, we must act now to protect our east side neighborhoods or risk another seven years of inaction. I'm voting yes for these land use items, and I encourage all my committee colleagues to do the same. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Rivera. Just want to recognize that we've been joined by Councilmember Lansman and Gibson, and now we will hear remarks from Councilmember Chin. Thank you, Chair Salamanca, for giving me this opportunity to speak. Today's vote is so personal to me and my district. Seven years ago, Hurricane Sandy rocked our shores. No one could have predicted the type of damage it brought leaving neighborhoods from Loisada to Two Bridges vulnerable and under-resourced. While flood waters spill into doorsteps and power shut off, our community sprung into action to provide the recovery system that our most vulnerable neighbors need. While it has taken years to bounce back, we vow to take the lessons from this moment to ensure that our communities, especially those that sit by the East River, will not be left behind again. Today's vote will allow our city to take a bold step for climate action and secure the storm protection our downtown communities are owed. The ESCR plan is a comprehensive approach to enhance our resiliency efforts from future sea level rises. Thanks to the input of the community, this plan will incorporate a construction phase approach to allow 42% of the park to remain open. This plan will have strong enforcement hours for overnight work and provide air monitoring, soil sample, and noise reduction. We will continue to work with DOT to make sure that our transportation infrastructure for bikes, buses, and pedestrians are maintained. Also in the response to concern about the loss of our tree beds, the city will be planting 1,000 new trees in Community Board 3 and 6. These are only a few of the incredible investment secured in this process, thanks to the responsive leadership of Council Member Colina Rivera, Speaker Corey Johnson, and Council staff. Colina, we saw how diligently you worked to push for more protection, enhance transparency, and secure the best for your constituency. We thank you for our leadership and congratulations. For many, the threat of climate change remains a distant reality. For us and our constituents, it is a reality we know all too well, a reality that the entire city must be prepared for. That starts here. The ESCR plan is a win in the long term, ensuring our community is resilient for years to come. I urge my colleague to vote yes. Thank you. Thank you, <clears throat> Councilmember Chin. We will also vote to approve LUs 563, an application submitted by the HPD for the Hunters Point South Parcels F and G Article 11 tax exemption. This tax exemption will facilitate the development of 847 units of affordable housing as part of a previously approved urban development area project on property located in Queens at Block 6, Lot 20, and 30. The development site is located in Councilmember Van Bramen's district. 
We will also vote to approve LUs 571 to make a technical amendment to Resolution 733 of 2019, which approved an urban development action area, an urban development action area project, and a disposition of real property located at 4697 3rd Avenue, Block 30, 41, Lot 38, and 40 in the Bronx. The amendment will remove an incorrect reference to the private housing finance law. This will facilitate the development of affordable housing in Council Member Torres's district. From our zoning subcommittees, we will vote to approve the modifications, LUs 559 and 560, to 44-01 Northern Boulevard rezoning. The application for property in Council Member Van Bremer's district is in Queens, would rezone an existing M1-1 district to an R7X and R6B district with a C2-4 commercial overlay. It would also establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area, utilizing option one and two to facilitate the construction of two new mixed-use buildings with approximately 335 dwelling units. Our modifications will be to remove option two, leaving option one. We will also be voting to approve with modifications that will use 550 through 554, the Peninsula Hospital Redevelopment Plan relating to property in Council Member Rich's district in Queens. The application seeks approval for a city map amendment, a zoning map amendment, a zoning text amendment, and two large scale general development special permits to modify the underlying bulk and sign regulations. As part of the proposed zoning text amendment, the application sought to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area utilizing option one and two. Our modification will be to remove option two, leaving option one. We will also reduce the height of the building and there will be a corresponding reduction in the dwelling unit count and a residential floor area. The reconstructive declaration associated with the special permit will also be modified by adding the local council member to the list of parties to be notified with regard to a school's mitigation plan. Clarifying that land for school annex space with core and shell may be provided off-site or on-site and requiring the phasing sequence as shown in Exhibit G to the re restrictive declaration. Um, Council Member Richards, would you like to give some remarks? Thank you, Chair Salamanca. Good morning. What a great day for the people of the Rockaways, but in particular for the people who reside in both Edgemere and Arvern a neighborhood that has always had the potential to not only serve as a retail destination for local residents, but a tourist attraction alike. However, like many neighborhoods on the eastern portion of the Rockaways, the challenges of sorely needed infrastructure, affordable housing, and a lack of open space for our young people to congregate were non-existent. This vacuum created immense challenges, such as the highest unemployment rate in Queens, high rates of obesity due to a lack of access to a supermarket in close proximity to thousands of public housing residents and homeowners alike. But today I'm happy to announce the Edgemere Commons Project seeks to address these systematic issues. This project will serve as a template for what a resilient mixed-use development should look like in the 21st century. During a time when our city is facing one of the largest housing crises we have ever witnessed, this project will produce over 2,000 units of true affordable housing, serving a healthy mix of incomes as low as 30% AMI. The addition of much needed senior housing units are also a big win for those who wish to age in place gracefully. I want my community to know that we heard you loud and clear on the need to ensure we aren't just building housing but addressing the needs of our community as well. This is why I'm proud to welcome nearly 150,000 square feet of retail and community facility space in Edgemere. The creation of a new community center, healthcare facility, supermarket open space, and much needed local and destination retail will enable us to stimulate the economy in Edgemere and ensure our youth and their families will have a safe space for activities. Furthermore, I'm happy to announce we've reached an agreement with the ARCA companies and 32BJ, which will ensure we aren't subsidizing poverty jobs. The ARCAs have also agreed to a 35% local hiring and 30% MWBE commitment. And to ensure these goals are achieved, they've also agreed to a $2 million community and youth development fund for local CBOs to track progress. And I know our work isn't finished here and look forward to working with many of the trades who express interest in this project as well. In closing, I want to thank the ARCA companies for their commitment to the Rockaway community, Alex ARCA, Daniel Moritz, Simon Bacchus, Ethan Schnorr, Joel Schnorr. I'd like to also thank uh, our chairs, 
um, uh, Chairs Moya, Adams, and Salamanca for your hard work. I would also like to thank the community board, the Peninsula Hospital Task Force, and all of the community stakeholders who engage on this project. I would like to also thank my staff. Lastly, to the amazing land use staff led by the impeccable Raju Mann, John Douglas, Amy Levinson, and Julie Lupin. I thank you all uh, for getting this project over the line. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Richards. Pursuant to Council Rule 7.90 and 11.60, we will also be filing preconsiders LUs for the Special Natural Resources District Zoning Text and Zoning Map Amendment, as well as LUs 558, the 25 Central Park West rezoning, to remove them from our calendar. These applications have been withdrawn by the applicant. Are there any questions or remarks from members of the committee? I right, see none, and I will, I will now call for a vote in accordance with the recommendations of the subcommittees and the local council members to approve LUs 563 through 571 to approve the modifications uh, as I described, LUs 548, 549, 550, 551, 552, 553, 554, 559, and 560, and to follow LUs 558, 25 Central Park West Rezoning, and preconsidered LUs for the Special Natural Resource District text and map amendment. Will the clerk please call the roll? William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote, committee on land use. All items are coupled. Chair Salamanca. Aye and all. Barron. Permission to explain my vote? Uh, Councilmember Barron to explain her vote. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I uh, just want to say that I vote aye on all with the exception of 563, which is Hunter's Point Parcels F and G. I don't think that we should be giving an Article 11 to a project that has 25% of the units at 125% AMI and another 25% of the units at market rate. I think that uh, there's a disproportionate benefit to the developer that could better be used for other struggling entities that need an Article 11. And on the east side uh, coastal res resiliency plan, I did speak with one of the sponsors and she explained some of the uh, adjustments that had been made, but there are still many questions that I have with that and she said she would get to me with that information, so I am abstaining on 548-549. I vote aye on the others. Deutsch. Lansman. Levin. Miller. I don't know, except for 563, I'll be abstaining. Reynoso. I don't know. Richards. Aye. Traeger. Permission to explain my vote? Councilmember Traeger to explain his vote. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I made similar remarks at the subcommittee when we held the uh, vote for the, uh, uh, the East Side Resiliency Project, and I'm, I feel compelled to, to, to share the same remarks here. I, I commend my colleagues who I think have done extraordinary hard work. This is, this is intense, this is very urgent, and this is very important. My complaint is with the city administration because we are a five borough city. It's not just Manhattan. My district, my part of the world, Southern Brooklyn, was one of the hardest hit areas in all of New York City during Superstorm Sandy. Uh, matter of fact, the Army Corps will tell you that the two boroughs that have the most vulnerabilities to climate change and, and to severe storms, Brooklyn and Queens. To date, the only amount of money that I have seen as far as city capital, not federal, city capital, to my end of the world is about $30 million or so for some shoreline elevation projects near a small creek, nothing to the likes of $700 million that we're seeing in Manhattan. And so, Mr. Mayor, we are a five borough city. There are other parts of the city besides Manhattan. And I represent folks who are working class families who not just uh, are afraid of displacement due to weather events, but financial storms as well, when flood insurance maps become mandated and will drive many working people out of our neighborhoods. So I wanna see investments of this type of magnitude in all parts of New York, and not just in some. 
and I want that noted on the record, and I will continue to hold this administration accountable until we see true equity and true protection and true protection of affordability in all of New York City. So I commend my colleagues, this was not easy, uh, but we need to see these types of resources across all regions of New York, and I, I vote aye. Ku. I will aye. Gordonchik. Aye. Adams. I'd like to echo the sentiment of every single word that was just uttered by my marvelous colleague, Councilmember Traeger. With that, I vote aye on all. Diaz. Yes or no? Moya. Aye. Rivera. Aye. My vote of 15 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. All items are adopted by the committee with land use item 563 is adopted by the With land use item 563 is adopted by the committee, 13 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and one abstention. And land use items 548 and 549 are adopted by the committee, 14 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and one abstention. I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues and council and land use staff for attending today's hearing. We will leave the roll open for five minutes.
Hi, we will continue.